Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial series on rigging. I mentioned this in a video a while back and I'm finally getting to it now. Uh, this first video, this isn't really part one, this is more of just an introduction to the uh, to the series just to talk about some things I've learned, show off my rig a little bit. We're not going to get into actually creating rig in this video, I'm just going to show you what, I, what I've got here and some things I've learned and, and just overall mindset when it comes to rigging. Because it's, it's really important for an animator to have a really a decent rig because it really contributes to how you can be a great animator, but if you have a not so great rig, then you're going to be limited by that uh, on how fast and how well you can do it. Uh, me having to upload two video or me creating two videos a week, um, I need to, obviously I need to be able to work be ugh, I need to be able to work pretty quickly, uh, and without a rig like this, then there would be no way. If I had to if I if I had to grab a rig offline and use that, there's no way I could uh, keep up. So rigs are very important. Um, so the way we're, we're going to be focusing on creating a rig that's easy, to, it's like a, a, a solid foundation, something that's pretty easy to use, quick to animate with, and then you can always add stuff to it later. But it's going to be fairly basic as far as features go. It's not going to be huge on all these little tweak controls and stuff like that. Um, and those aren't always a good thing because they can slow down how much time it takes to animate. And I'll point that out a little bit as I go through these controllers here. Uh, but this is going to be, we're not going to go for creating this rig exactly, we're going to be going for a more basic one. Uh, as far as like experience level for this, um, it's going to be like a basic level series, but you should have some experience in the software, just at least be familiar with it a little bit. If you're completely new, uh, I'd suggest watching my series on uh, getting, uh, getting, I don't know, I can't remember what it's called, basically it's a beginner series. Um, for just getting started with Maya, and there'll be a link, I think that's what it's called, getting started, or something like that. Anyway, there'll be a link in the description to that, so if you're brand new, go ahead and watch that, and maybe play around with the software a little bit before uh, getting into the rigging aspect of it. Uh, also, for a version, I'll be using the latest version of the time of this being recorded, so that's Maya 2016 Service Pack 2. Uh, make sure, if you have the applications, or if you have Maya installed, or you just installed it, make sure open the application manager and make sure you're uh, updated to the latest version for all the bug fixes and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the rig a little bit here. Uh, for the most part, uh, the rig we make is going to be pretty similar in a lot of ways, except for the face. Uh, I may be late. The controls might be laid out similarly, but the way it works is going to be completely different. So I'm not even going to really bother with showing you the face controllers because they're going to be completely different. This is a joint-based face. It uses joints to control all the deformations in the face. We're going to be using blend shapes, which are a lot easier to work with, but don't give you as much uh, flexibility in terms of after the fact after the fact adjustments, if that makes any sense. Um, joints are a lot harder to work with and a lot harder to set up, but they they do have their benefits. Uh, so we'll we'll be sticking to blend shapes, which we'll get into. Uh, how those work and everything, obviously, when uh, we get there in the series. Uh, but for controllers here, we'll start we are at the bottom and work our way up. we got the feet here. Pretty simple. You move these around. Uh, the leg follows. You can rotate them as well. And the wrist, or the not the wrist, yes, this is a wrist. The ankle follows. Uh, we got a couple extra attributes here over in the channel box. we got a foot roll, so this will be very helpful for doing walk cycles and stuff, so the foot isn't clipping through the ground plane. Uh, toe spin, which pivots the foot around the toe, and I get best. I bet, as you can guess, heel spin pivots it around the heel. And we just rotate the controller; it pivots around the center of the foot. Up here, we have the root controller. Here, this just it's kind of the center of mass controller. You can see it uh, moves everything above it and rotate it as well. And then above that, there is this uh, the torso control, which I can use to bend the torso. Now, uh, this is kind of an example of what I mean by being able to create a rig that's faster to animate, but maybe not as much uh, fine to control. A lot of uh, popular method I see of controlling the spine are like four, three or four rings going up the length of the spine, sometimes more, uh, which you can get super specific on how they're bent, but that those are three, four, sometimes even five objects you have to animate. And sometimes you don't need all that fine-tuned control. It should be an optional thing, not a thing you have to deal with. So in this in this rig here, I've got these two controllers, which I have to use really to get the basic kind of deformations. But I can use these controls optionally. This one gives me more fine-tuned control, and these are 100% optional. I often don't even use them. And that comes back to, as I was saying, being able to create a rig that still has those fine-tuned controls, but really where the focus is being able to animate quickly and not having to use those. Um, they're kind of building a hierarchy of controls where one 
is above the other, if, if that makes sense. And, and it'll make, some, I guess, more sense uh, when we actually get into the, the rigging of it. Uh, for the arms here, uh, these are IK, we got FK and IK switches. If you're not familiar with what FK and IK means, don't worry about that. We'll get more in depth uh, when we actually get to that part of the series. Uh, but IK stands for inverse kinematics, for, uh, FK stands for forward kinematics. That basically means controlling it from the shoulder to the wrist. In the case of forward kinematics, you're controlling it forward from the shoulder. And inverse kinematics, you're controlling it opposite. You're controlling it from the wrist to the shoulder. So uh, right now, this is a, oops, this is a uh, FK control, or IK control here. We can just move it. Just like the legs, it follows wherever the controller is. The arm will solve for that. Uh, unlike the legs, though, where you twist this, twist the knee, uh, did you actually twist the controller? In this case, this solver works a little bit differently, and we don't want that. Instead, there's a separate attribute called twist, which I can use to twist the arm. There's also here an attribute called world parent. So currently, if I rotate this or something, the arms, oops, the arms will stay in place, or will follow, because they're parented under this controller. Uh, I can set that to world parent so that it's parented under the world and will stay in position. So if I set that to one, and now I rotate this, You'll see that controller. Whoops! That controller stays in position there. Helpful for if the character has to interact with a stationary object like a wall or something like that. Um, and then for the wrists here, these rotate. Pretty intuitive here. And these also have a world parent option. So if I set that to world, now the wrist will stay in position, regardless of how I move this. It won't stay in position, but it'll stay in the same orientation. Again, helpful if you, helpful for if the character has to grab onto something solid. So, for example, imagine there's a bar here he's holding onto. If I rotate this, it'll look like, unless I go too far, but it'll look like that character is still holding onto that bar. We don't have to worry about keying any of this stuff and moving it around or anything. So that's where that's helpful. And we'll be, we'll be building all that into our rig as well. Go ahead and just reset these back to their position. Reset this. Okay, up here we have the shoulder controller. This just moves the entire arm, and this also has an influence switch. So this is how you turn it from FK to IK. I'll set this to zero to turn into uh, FK mode. And now you can see we've got this way of controlling the arm. I usually stick to the IK just because this is two controllers and IK is just one controller. But this is sometimes helpful for swinging motions and other things. Uh, so it's it's helpful to have a switch there just in case. And the head here, simple just. Rotate it and the head rotates. We might look at how to, depending on how long the series is going on, I don't want it to be a super long series, uh, but depending on how long things are taking and if people want it, you guys can say whether or not you want to see that. Um, we'll look at how to control the head with a uh, locator. So if I, if I just create a locator real quick, um, you can see we can set up the head so that way it uh, follows the position of an object like this. So wherever you put this in the scene, the head will look directly at that. And we can do the same thing with the eyes. So depending on how things are going, I'll, uh, I'll decide whether or not to include that in the series. Uh, for the face controls, as I mentioned, I'm just going to kind of skip over that because they're going to be completely different in our rig. Uh, the eyebrows, however, will be similar, where you have three controllers on this side, three controllers on this side, uh, and that controls that area of the eyebrow. So for this side, we can control the right eyebrow, and then we can control the respective areas of the left eyebrow with these. So pretty intuitive there. Not the fastest way of animating the eyebrows, but the eyebrows in general don't take too long to animate, so not a big deal there. And a big deal though, and uh, and these give you a lot of fine-tuned control as well. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you're looking forward to the rest of the series, uh, go ahead and follow the link in the description or the annotation to the second channel uh, and subscribe to there so you can keep up with videos as they're being made. As I, I think I've mentioned already that I'll be making the videos or I'll be uploading the videos as I make them. So any questions you have on the video, go ahead and leave a comment. And if it's, when the first, if it's within the first couple of hours or maybe in the first 24 hours, I can address it in the next video, uh, which will be pretty interesting. So yeah, that's it for this. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.